Hey guys, I'm doing this video because most people are searching it on the internet and they're struggling to find it. So I want to show you how to test if your dryer motor is really failed before pesticides in another one. You need to have these four things. I mean a long screwdriver, third one, T1, and a total siege. Multimeter and uh, masking tape. So, on your multimeter, you need to be sure that it is set to the continuity. So, on the teacher screwdriver, is for removing your back cover panel. So, yeah, the cables, all I need to do is to separate them and it has a your coat make sure it's not is unplugged i'm gonna use this utility knife to cut the tape to separate the cables but i think there's a cover that was supposed to be here i guess it's missing and ended up making a plan to put the tape is it capacitor on this capacitor we have four cables Two of them goes to the washer motor and two others goes to the dryer motor as you can see. And we have to separate all of them. Right now I'm holding the dry cable code and I really want to focus on the blue ones. Here's the power code and the uh, water pump. All the blue wires from the motors are connected together with the blue wire from the code, which is the neutral. It will be four cables. And you actually have a long nose plier to open the caps in order to disconnect all the cables. So now I need to directly connect the mod the dryer motor without you using the the switches as you can see I'm disconnecting to short circuit the cable before touching because there's a dangerous voltage coming from the capacitor so now I've separated the cable three I mean four cables from the this is the neutral wire one from the power code that connects all the motors together and we need to mask them somewhere so that they will not cause any disturbance while we while we do the connection so now I can show circuit in the the, the capacitor uh, this is the live wire cable brown one there somewhere and here I'm holding the cable from the capacitor that goes to the uh, dryer motor and as you can see we have four cables done from the capacitor the one that goes to the motor and two that goes up inside the machine for those in those four cables that goes up two are going up and the other one is for the dry and the other one is for the water pump there there is one cable for combining the two motors when the dryer motor is spinning the water pump has to work too so now I'm holding two cables from the capacitor. So I need to disconnect those two that goes up to the switches. Let me just put this cap for temporary not to shoot circuit. So disconnect it. 
and put them aside. I'm not gonna use the switch, I need to directly connect the motor. So now we have two cables connected to from, from the capacitor to the motor. And remember the blue one is the neutral. So now I need to connect the live wire between these purple cables. So now I'm holding the life the live wire. I want to disconnect those three other cables. You see there are three cables, which means we are is for operating three types of motors the washer, the dryer and the water pump. So I just wanna put them aside not to disturb us. We're not gonna use the switches. I want to directly connect the motor. So on those purple cables put my live cable coming from the power code as you can see. Uh, from the power supply code and we need to make it simple we have to add a switch between those to make us operate this very simple and uh, put the masking tape in temporary for to avoid the cable short circuit so we're doing so to each side of the cable ends. So now we are ready to plug to plug in our I mean our code and we have an, our extension code and we can plug in our machine this is the from the it is the switch was on off position I mean the it is a toggle switch actually if you don't know toggle toggle switch gonna pop it on there on there so now as you can hear nothing there is a humming sound the motor is on but it cannot spin the motor fails but I realized something that the brakes the brake release cable is was loose and the brake the brake the brake was still forced to the coupling against the coupling so now to release it but nothing happens so the motor fails I'm trying to help it with their hand nothing happens we're still getting a humming sound here's a toggle switch on nothing before continuing with the video, let's dive into this a little bit. So we have confirmed that the motor failed actually so in some cases but this type of connection may make the motor to run so if it happens that this was successfully made the motor to run so the problem will be the switches so i want to show you just in case how to uh, test them because some of the day you can find that you are not in the same position, so you put this one into to your own position and come to the back of the machine with your multimeter. Uh, you remember, it has to be on the continuity. So our switch con operation switch is on. So it the multimeter have to sound like this if there is a good connection here the sound of attaching the brown wire and the capacitor wire and don't worry about this 
at the cable not sounding because it is for the uh, drain water pump and the wires have to be in a combination way in order to work so yeah as you can see for in some cases if it might happen that you didn't get the sound from the multimeter i want to show you how to open this head in order to see the switches and the yeah the switches i'm talking about so the machine the dry side is using two switches actually the timing switch and the door switch so sometimes the switches might fail so this is how to open the head you just try to twist this uh forward while trying to open it so after twisting that you can feel the force so you do the long screwdriver you need to push those clamps forward so it will pop up much easier you open space and push see? everything opens much easier you need to disconnect the drain valve from the string coming from the drain select a switch because it will force the switch head panel not to open but now you can be able to open the switch head panel up Is the reason why the bar cable was loose because the uh, D18 lever is broken as you can see it is attached to the door so when you open the door that's where the brakes got operated so after closing the brakes have to let the motor spin for free but as you can see it's broken yeah, the switches guys and the cables as you can see the middle switch have six cables connected to it to each of its corners and those two are for the washer the normal and delicate delicate and the power and these two other three coming from the side is for the drain operating but it is not necessary for you guys to know this so this is the inside view of the spin timer operating switch it's one of its cable has to pass through the door operating switch because these two works together so this is the door operated switch and when you close the door the motor will spin and it, it fails this is how to remove it simply push pull this one and remove it so when you it might fail sometimes due to a failure connection so you need to check if this connects really good and it has to be like this and now the brake operating cable uh, levers is broken but I think we need to leave it like this because this machine will not gonna work anymore but it will be dangerous for someone to use the machine in a situation like that because it might cause your motor to fail because the brake force is uh, really strong that it might cause your motor to fail so after closing you need to make sure that everything is closed properly leaving no gap on it now it's time to disassemble my demonstrating setup to 
to wire everything back to its normal condition. So these motors may fail if the seals are letting water pouring on top of them. So if you want to see the seal I'm talking about, you have to go back to my video, which is called How to Fix a Twin Tower Washing Model Noise Dry Squeaking Sound. You will see the seal I'm talking about between on top of the model, which is very important. Go check on the playlist. So right now I want to show you the symptoms of the uh, motor that is failing. Here you go. As you can hear the humming sound coming from the motor. It can spin to the other side but failing to produce enough power to spin the pulse set. Here's the belt. Now let me hook the motor with the gearbox to see what we can get. Now the situation tends to be worse because it is failing to spin. As you can see, I'm trying to help it with my hand, but nothing. After removing a belt, the motor pretends to work. Thanks for watching.